Have you ever thought of using a microscope in your shop? Now here's something here. If we take a look at this bearing and somewhere on here, there's a little bitty scratch that kind of goes kind of diagonal there. You really can barely see it with the naked eye. I bring this into focus here. And there it is. And look how that gal is running across here. So, now we're going to see it dry. I'll be honest, when we got this, I had no intention at all of reviewing this. This was just going to be something in our shop where we could take closer looks at things and be able to record them or at least snap shots of them. Uh, everything from wear in tools to wear in car parts. Uh, you name it, anything we needed to get a closer look rather than taking our phones and trying to get up close or taking our, our video cameras or cameras and zooming in and, and holding things. I wanted something that was more of a stationary object that we could get a closer image of. And that's where we came across the Joy Allen's a 10 inch tri lens digital microscope. Now, that's a lot of words. Anyway, the idea is though, it's a digital microscope. It's not like your typical microscopes where you know, you've got the lens, you gotta dial everything in. Well, you have to do that a little bit, uh, but it's a lot easier to use. Basically, kind of get it up where you think you need it, and then you can dial it in a little more, a uh, little more fine tuning, if you will, and then just kind of focus that lens, and you kind of get an idea of the depth perception of each one of the lenses. But it's really cool that we can take a closer look at specific items, and in fact, let's just dive in uh, put this thing together and then we'll show you what we're talking about as to getting a closer look at parts and even tooling and different pieces. This is a digital microscope, says it all over the box, right? And why in the world's a tool channel reviewing a digital microscope? Well, we'll get into that here in just a few moments, but just want to show you what's here in the box and how it comes. Uh, number one, this one comes with a 10 inch display. I think this same company like offers a seven inch display, which by the way, if you want to buy one of these, great. If not, great. Just kind of showing you uh, our idea of, of what we were looking for, um, which by the way, this is kind of the microscope, the, the lens portion of it right here. Uh, this is our monitor. Well, let's get to it and uh, we'll show that here in a moment. Um, but just everything that comes with it, these are extra lenses. And I believe everything is based on, you know, how much magnification um, and range of, of view, if you will. We even have a remote, like a power adapter, USB cord with the power adapter, some thumb screws, uh, looks like some type of maybe lens holder or cover or something like that. Another USB, uh, some sort of power. It's an SD card, looks like a 32 gig. Monitor, looks like the base. We have some lights connect to the base. Looks like the, the post everything rides on. Uh, some type of contraption. It probably holds that monitor. Uh, this is for actually holding slides like a regular microscope would. So you can actually set it up that way as well. Uh, as well as we get some test slides. Maybe cockroach legs and uh, mice hair. I don't know, whatever's on there. Uh, 32 gig SD card, some thumb screws, Looks like, again, a lens cover or something like that. Not sure. Uh, but anyway, some cool stuff here. So let's get started and set this up because I'm excited to show you why we want this thing. No batteries. Triple A's. So let's get this thing put together. At least we're going to take a stab at it without using those instructions. Because those are no fun. So base plate. Make sure those lights are out of the way. Looks like the main post looks like threading there, threading there. Yeah, that's an easy one. Ah, okay. Looks like a minimizer or something to keep uh, whatever from sliding. Yep, there we go. So I like that. So basically you can set, even if this loosened and it didn't come crashing down on the uh on the lens so i get it i get it i think i've i've got the idea here here's the monitor and the lens and i believe let's see if i'm thinking right here yeah okay so you got to take those uh thumb screws all the way out 
lens comes out. And then I think we set this down on there, back these out. By the way, there's little rubber feet on these thumb screws. So be careful you don't rip those off, as you can see right here. So you're not digging into the plastic. So I'm sitting that all the way down on there and then tightening this and tightening this. And by the way, on top of the monitor, we have an SD card slot and looks like a USB, looks like micro USB right there and maybe a mini HDMI right there. So a couple of different connections there as well as the SD card slot. And by the way, that's a micro SD card slot. Not sure which way. There we go. And now we'll put this lens back on carefully. And it looks like it will only go where those screws go. And just finger tighten those nice and snug. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Now we can raise and lower the monitor with that thumb screw there. That's kind of a micro adjustment and kind of a little gross, if you will. I'll clamp that down. Also, I can loosen this thumb screw and go in and out as well. And go out that way or in this way. But this is going to provide more of kind of a nicer, smooth adjustment. And I can get that from either side. Not sure what this thumb screw does back here, but this again raises and lower this, and you have one on either side to make it very smooth. And by the way, if you want to adjust the trueness right here of this pole here, then you have to actually back this off. And this is a 12 millimeter bolt. Kind of tough to get into because of this light here and by the way there's quite a bit of it's tightened very well so you can loosen that and then adjust this kind of the plumb of this and set it to make sure that you are nice and perpendicular to your base again with a 12 millimeter wrench now i mentioned that here on the top of the unit is a mini hdmi and one of the cords is an hdmi to a mini hdmi so in other words we can plug this in here and actually send this to a larger screen if we want to, or to another screen. So that's what this cable is for. And that's what that port is for. Also, we get this cable here, which on one side is like a little control panel. And then it splits off into three wires. Of this little wire right here, which is going to go right there into the USB mini or USB. This one here, this barrel connector, is going to put in at the base. So right here on the back of the base, little barrel connector connector. So take our barrel connector, push it in there, and then we're good. And then the other end is the USB, and that's going to plug into our power adapter to power everything up. So all I did was plug that in, and our lights are already on. So we have our lights here. We have our screen on. Let's get this protective coating off. So power button turns the lights on and off. So I can make them brighter or dimmer. So right here, right above the lens is where you actually adjust this. So I'm going to put something underneath the microscope. And then with this, that's getting worse, so there we go. So now I can dial in about where we need that for focus. Then, can actually easily read what we have on this guy here. Which, by the way, this lens here is the 12 millimeter to 320 millimeter. And by the way, I can do this with the remote or with the actual monitor. So we see that there. If we go to the up arrow, we can go in up to three times digital zoom. 
So this is the A lens, which is 12 millimeters to 320 millimeters. And that's given us 18 to 720 times magnification. And also with the remote, I can also take snapshots. I can also reverse the image around, whatever I need to do. And right here from the monitor screen, just hit the little camera icon there and that will actually take an image of the screen and save that. And by the way, just so you know, this is our socket right here that we're reading so well. Let's swap this out really quick with our L lens. And the L lens is our 90 millimeter to 300 millimeters. And that's going to give us 60 to 240 times zoom. As you can see now, even more magnification. In fact, let's look at this tip. Really dial in on that tip now. Really getting detail on the tip of that bit. Now here's where things get fun and where I think this is very applicable for a shop setting. Now you may have different ideas, uh, but stuff like uh, recently we've been testing impact wrenches and you can see the effects that impact wrenches have on sockets. Now you can see this with your naked eye for sure, but I wanted to go in here, get a little broader look at the actual damage that a, an impact wrench does to sockets. We were kind of proving that when you've got half inch impact wrenches delivering 2,000 foot pounds of force or will break away 2,000 foot pound fasteners, that there's damage being done on the tools and it's time to step up to a three quarter inch. And you can see here, Sure, you can see that with your naked eye, but when we take a closer look, you can see where all that metal is actually rolled over on the edges where those anvils meet the socket. And now we've got all kind of rounded edges. Um, and so now our striking point, even right there, you can see against that straight line that we've got kind of a mountain right there from that anvil. Again, now it's not striking that whole face. It's only striking part of that and we're not getting all that force to the socket. So literally, as time goes on, you're delivering less and less power to the faster to the socket because of all the damage you're creating on the socket. Anyway, so you can see it on tooling. Bearings. Put this bearing in here. And now I can get a real close look at the actual scarring on the bearing surface. Let me get some light down there. So now we can see, do we actually have any damage on the bearing? And you can start to compare now of what normal wear looks like. Got a little shininess there on the bearing. Uh, and we can see imperfections in the bearing face right there. And even valves. So now, what may look like a great valve face, now all of a sudden we can see imperfections in that and see, well, maybe we need to lap these or maybe after we lap them, we can still see, are there imperfections still in the sealing edge of that valve? Of course, this one has not been lapped. This one's fresh out of an engine, probably quite a few miles on it, but you can again, begin to see a lot more detail into this and I'm not having to hold my phone close to it and magnify it. I've got a stationary place where I can take a look at this stuff and then even getting into, now this is not reading as well as I wanted it to, uh, mainly because really can't get light down in there where I need it. I think we could probably figure something out with some additional lighting, but these, uh, these lights aren't tall enough, if you will, to be able to get down in there to see where I really wanna see. Uh, but we can lay this down, and with these iridium tips nowadays, these spark plugs are a little harder to see rather than your old champions with a big old blunt nose face on it. Now we can dial this in and really get a look at that tip and see what kind of corrosion we have on there. See what kind of wear is going on. See what kind of uh, residue we, hear, we have here and are we having any fouling or 
or we have it in a lean condition. So again, just getting a lot better picture, zooming in digitally and leaving everything stationary where you're not having multiple hands moving. So I'm really liking this setup, even getting into soldering circuit boards uh, and doing fine detail work. I think this can come in very handy. Now here's something here. If we take a look at this bearing and somewhere on here, there's a little bitty scratch that kind of goes kind of diagonal there. You really can barely see it with the naked eye. I bring this into focus here and there it is. And look how deep that gouge is running across there. So you're not really seeing it with your eye, but when you really zoom in there, kind of get an idea of what we're dealing with. So there's literally a groove cut in to that bearing. I think the uses are pretty broad with this. And in fact, uh, more and more things will come to mind as we keep using this. And that's why we thought it might be a good idea to review this because it might spark some interest in others that need to do exactly what we need to do. And that is take a closer look at spark plugs, at uh, the faces of valves and looking at uh, looking at the ceiling edges of valves, even looking at bearings and being able to spot things in bearings that maybe your eye is not picking up, um, even when you're trying to get a closer look at it and seeing actually how bad it is or literally seeing that, hey, maybe everything's pretty good. So anyway, we think this is really cool, um, <laughs> getting a closer look at these impact sockets after our impact wrenches have done such damage to them. You really get a better idea of the type of damage that's being done on this. Uh, this setup runs about 200 bucks. I believe they have a cheaper one at like 130. Um, there's other microscopes out there where you can get them cheaper as well, but I would highly recommend something like this, especially if you're doing a lot of diagnosis to mechanical failure, to mechanical parts. It really gives you a tighter look at things and you can record those things. So, hey, keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. If you don't mind, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And by all means, if you hated our video, well, give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day. Keep smiling.